So obviously, as anybody can see, this uh, old weed eater lawnmower is in a sordid state of affairs. It's missing the gas tank and carburetor. It's missing the uh, engine uh, blade brake control cable. All of the wheels need to be, uh, well, at least the axles need to all be taken apart, cleaned up, and probably gonna take my uh, wire wheel that I've got on an angle grinder to these uh, axles because they just don't want to spin all that well. I don't have another deck to put this uh, particular engine on, unfortunately. And even if I did, the motor, the crankshafts on these are so short that there's really um, very few decks with bags that can accept them. So if I can get this thing running, sell it on for 50 or 60 bucks all cleaned up and sorted out that'll be good enough for me i mean somebody needs a lawnmower or something just to cut the grass or something to just beat on a little bit these are okay for that so let's get started i already kind of know what i need I need a blade too apparently i guess we can start there that is a 20 inch deck so I've got all my blades up here, of course. They're kind of out of the way. I think this is a 20-incher. The uh, mounting bracket's the same anyways, so set this one aside. Need to uh, clean it up and sharpen it. Yeah, pretty sure that'll fit. If not, it might be a little too big. We'll see. So I also need... A air filter hat too and I've got one right here no, uh, no screw. so I definitely need one of them need this air filter it's kind of rough but it'll be okay gas tank and carburetor either one of these will probably be fine they're both in about the same condition and I also need some uh, mounting bolts which I'm pretty sure I have. I'll have to dig through and see what I have. Screw right here, actually. I got a few of these that'll work. Same threads. Hopefully they're long enough. So I'm gonna finish getting up all the uh, extra stuff. Might have to find a new spring for it. Actually, there's two springs. So I just took those three bolts off the recoil. Everything does look good under here. I'm going to uh, pull the governor flap off here and maybe clean that out a bit. I also need to readjust the coil, so we'll get a business card and do that. And I also need to find a new uh, blade control cable, cable, which I should have. All right, so two things. The first is I managed to save this governor arm. So we'll set this aside. And I'm actually going to use this carburetor because I've already put a new primer bulb in it at one point. This is still in one piece. This is obviously not. So we'll save this PCV line. Move the old carburetor. It's pretty common that these like to do this. Just with age, the plastic gets pretty brittle. All right, so these are all off. And amazingly, it came off in one piece. Somebody's been into this before because we're missing the screen. The spring is still there, so we'll reuse that. Here's a good use screen. I'll clean this out before I install it. Put these screws out. But I will keep this carburetor um, just because there's good parts on it. I kind of make it a habit to keep stuff like this. So the rubber gasket goes on the bottom. The paper gasket goes right on top. So new diaphragm 795-083. Get these from your local lawn and garden place. So, 
of our gasket is first. Paper gasket. And of course, the carburetor. Spring goes right here. And the screen just goes right on like this. Perfect. You just want to make sure that that spring stays where it's supposed to be because sometimes they can fall off. Nice and snug with the screws. Do not over torque them. You run the risk of breaking the plastic carburetor. So I pulled another engine out of the hoard just to use as reference and mainly just to show you guys, but you want it just barely off of the uh, flywheel. You can see down here, here's the linkage I've been talking about. So we might have to adjust it just a little bit more. So I pr pulled off the uh, two springs and I might as well have just taken this piece too. So I did. And we're just gonna reinstall these onto that and then adjust that with the business card. Gonna go here. Get in place. So we may have to move this spring just a little bit. But now everything mostly in place, we can uh, tighten that up. So I've got a brand new cable here. This one should work. And we're just going to this end then just like this in place just like that so this uh, handle's got a little bit of a bend in it that's an easy fix I'm not worried about that right now but this will uh, this will at least have us in the clear for that all right so blades balanced it's worn pretty evenly, but this is more than good enough to stick on a mower like this. It'll still cut grass just oh. fine. Stick it on. New blade bolt. And nice and snug. There we go. Off camera, I initiated the oil change. It's pretty black, it needs to be changed. We're gonna put some of my uh, engine restore stuff into the new stuff. So I'm gonna mix that in. These take about 12 to 16 ounces of oil, these Briggs Classic engines. So that's what we'll put in it. The compression feels a little bit low when I've pulled the pull cord. Not a surprise. Hopefully we can save it still. All right, so now that that's completely emptied. What I'm gonna do now is measure out about 16 ounces of oil with that mixed in total. So the manufacturer of this stuff says to add about four ounces into the oil or the crankcase rather. Um, Brand new can. And I've already shaken it, but I will shake this again. It's the uh, website of the people that make this. So four ounces. Perfect. 
and we're going to add about 12 ounces of this 10w30 chevron motor 16 oil. fluid ounces total This stuff does mix pretty well and pretty quick. So funny story, it died out. You had to looking at something, realize that both of these head bolts were completely missing. They've been missing since the start of this video. My bad, but what had happened was thermal expansion started leaking out compression, exhaust gases in this case, or intake gases, one of the two. And uh, right around here was where it started leaking out, so I started hearing it. So I just washed it and uh, cut some dead grass, plenty of that to go around. So really quickly, all I do to grease these up is I use a little bit of molly grease or really whatever grease I have lying around, no big deal. Take the wheel off, take the nut off of course, and clean the axle up with something like this. Sandpaper would work too, it would just take a little longer you wanted to do it by hand but clean it up really well throw some of this on just a little bit not much throw everything back together that's the end result this thing could not roll on its own like this before I did it but now these wheels are like butter The added bonus with this grease is, yeah, it will attract some dirt and grime, but it will prevent those axles from rusting up again and having the same issue. It's kind of a trade-off. You can't have one without the other. There's a negative to just about every way you could do it, but this is the way that I prefer. So this thing runs good now. Might replace that pull cord, but... It's about a 40 or $50 lawnmower. It's the thing that sucks about these kinds of decks. They just don't really fetch all that much money in this area. People, for some reason, really want a lawnmower with the bags. So those command the most value. But hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more. I also fixed the handle. So it's working nice and fine. This is actually the wrong handle for this lawnmower, but it's how I received it. So I ground down. The edges of it here, you can kind of see it better on this one. So now it's nice and buttery smooth. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This will make somebody a decent little mower for the money.